Hey guys, so I'm doing a little bit different video here today, and I think I probably end up saying that a lot about doing a little bit different video. And that's because even though this channel is primarily focused around, let me fix the camera, it looks a little off here. Um, even though this, this channel is primarily most of you about van life, RV life, off-grid life and whatnot, there are, other, or there are some other topics that I find to be very, very important that while they may not be directly related to this type of life, I still think they should be discussed. Um, because they're valuable across the spectrum. So this particular topic I'm going to talk about today is one that uh, has come up with several other people that RV, van dwell, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it came up at the Quinault YouTuber meetup. Uh, it seemed like several people were curious about this because uh, I would bring it up. So let's just delve into it because um, it's kind of a big topic and so I, you know, I could sit and talk about it for a big portion of the day without any problem. Oh, my light just went out. See, these are the things. I just, I like to shoot stuff raw. So, I mean, now you've got to see it. The, my backlight just went out. So, I could edit that out, but I'm just going to leave it in. Uh, so, anyway, this is a big topic. I could spend a lot of hours talking about it, but I know this is YouTube, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to try to make it concise. So, the topic today is specifically about privacy privacy and the security that comes with privacy. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Uh, the main thing I mean about that, and I, it, this is valuable for everyone, but uh, let's just be honest, 99% of people out there will never employ this even though they really should. The biggest aspect of privacy is about uh, maintaining your anonymity to a great degree. And what I mean by that is, is that people are so willing to spill their information whenever they go somewhere. Uh, whether they're going into Starbucks and ordering a coffee or whether they're going into Harbor Freight and buying something and they ask for your information or you know like Radio Shack used to do when Radio Shack was in business they would ask for all your information well a lot of stores a lot of businesses a lot of medical offices they all want to get your information it's all about harvesting your information so they can market to you and then they can also take that information and resell it for a profit um, and so there's different aspects to privacy and anonymity but the um, but the point is is that your privacy and your anonymity are constantly under assault when you're out in public. Anytime you're out in the public dealing with, with uh, people in any aspect. And so there is numerous aspects to why you should want your privacy and anonymity. Um, and one of those has to do with your safety and also being able to protect yourself against uh, uninvited people at your doorstep or people that could do you harm or people that could be trying to bring frivolous lawsuits against you and I've had all those things happen and you go well that sounds rather unlucky well you know you could call it luck or you could just call it the, the run of the game because I've had different lines of work that I've been involved in which certainly attract certain types of people um, I've worked in security I've worked in um, asset location where you're trying to go and find assets that people don't want you to have uh, that they don't want people to get um, and so when you start digging for people's assets, that pisses people off, and so that can get people wanting to come after you. Um, even this uh, truck incident that I did a video about, okay, so this is a perfect example of where the steps that I've taken to ensure my own privacy are working. So this recent incident that I had, uh, that I put on the channel, uh, the collision video about a, a girl that ran into me, right? Uh, I was going through a green light, she was at a red light, and she rolled through her red light and ran into me, right? Well, the problem is, is she, her father showed up at the scene after the incident happened, and immediately started getting irate and starting to, uh, started to get irate towards me. And the reason why I come to find out is that they did not carry full coverage insurance. And so that meant that basically their car is just gone. I mean, the, the value of their car is just gone because they don't have replacement insurance by their choice. So what that meant for me is that they now wanted, to, he wanted, the father wanted to come after me for his daughter's mistake, right? And so what happened is my insurance company said, we're not paying on your claim. Uh, you know, we'd, we're not paying on this. This was, this was not our insured's fault. That's me. It was not our insured's fault. So you guys no, we're not paying on it so he immediately the father who was not even there and did not witness what happened uh, got irate and apparently start and I'm hearing this through the other insurance uh, or through the insurance claims adjuster as he started threatening that he was going to sue me 
Uh, so I subsequently, because alleging that I was drunk at the scene, well, first of all, I don't drink, so good luck with that one, buddy. Um, but the point of all this is, is that uh, I got a phone call a couple weeks later from a process server. And the process server is trying to find me to serve me uh, presumably preserve you know I'm assuming this is what's going on to serve me with a uh, with a, uh, a complaint for this incident that happened right now I'm not worried about it because my insurance company already said don't worry about it you're covered if anything happens we're going to defend you you don't have to have any concerns about that um, but the reason my privacy worked in this instance and why it works in many instances which I can outline those for you is because for process to be served properly and legally so that it cannot be challenged later in a court uh, you have to serve the appropriate person for which is named in the lawsuit right well the thing is is if you can't find me how are you going to serve me and you say well how is it they can't find you well you may assume that it's just because oh I live in a in a converted box truck and that's why they can't find me oh no 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 the reason they can't find me is because years ago I learned the lesson of privacy which is to disconnect your name from your real home address and to never disclose your real home address. And I had a real home address for many years up until just this year. Uh, but the importance is, and I can't go into all the details in this video or this video would be a very, very long video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link below a, uh, an Amazon, a fly in here. A link below to a Amazon link for a privacy author who is I considered to be the best out there right now. I, I think he's the best out there, period. Uh, his concepts have not been challenged. He, he has not had, uh, he's not run into any legal problems like some of these so-called privacy guys do where, you know, they're running afoul of the government. No, this guy's stuff, his information is rock solid. I've been using it for years. Uh, I think his stuff is really good. The only problem with uh, him, his name is JJ, well, <laughs> it's not his real name. His assumed name that he uses as a pen name is JJ Luna. And so I'm going to link his book right here below. The only problem with him is that uh, he is up in years. He's 88, I think he's 88 years old now. And what I mean by problem, it's not a problem that he's reached the age of 88. It's only a problem that he's not going to be around for decades more, as I wish he were going to be. And so since he's not going to be around for decades more, he's not going to be putting out new information you know, for the next 10, 15, 20 years. I wish he was. But the point is, he's already written several books on privacy, and uh, his his uh, penultimate book on privacy, I'd say his biggest probably success of the books that he's written, uh, is uh, linked right here below. And I'll go ahead and put a picture, of a, a picture of it up here also. So you can find that on Amazon if you like. Um, but the point of his book, and I'm not going to go through all his book because, again, this would make it a long video, but the primary premises of his book are, number one, you should not, and that's pretty much it, you should not ever give out your real name to anybody unless you are um, absolutely required to by law. So if you're stopped by a police officer on the side of the road, that would be an exception. If you're uh, brought into a court of law, all right, that would be an exception. Um, if this has to do with your own medical situation, you know, you're going to see a doctor or you're in the hospital, all right, that would be an exception. But otherwise, other than a few rare circumstances, you should never disclose your real name to anybody. And that may sound a little, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? That may sound like uh, people are a little superstitious or a little on edge by that, but there's a very good reason for that. With just one piece of information about you, I could unravel your life and find everything out about you. And that's the reality. And having done asset location before, I know this to be true. You give me one cell phone number. You give me one license plate. You give me, and I'm just talking about one of these pieces of information, not all of them together. But you just need one thing. Give me one address. You just give me one piece of information, and if you know how and you have the resources available, you could find out every single thing about a person's life. You could find everything out about their relatives' lives. You could find them probably anywhere they are. Uh, and so this is very important to understand that this is why, for true privacy, you should never give out your real name. And you say, well, you give out your name, Jay. No, I don't. You think Jay's my real name? That's not my real name. Um, 
And then the other side of the of the book, which if you read J.J. Luna's book, you can uh, read about it and find out a lot more of this in detail if it's of interest to you, is you should never disclose your home address. Ever. I mean, you just don't. And you go, well, how are you going to do that with uh, various circumstances? How are you going to get the pizza delivered to your house? Well, I can tell you that for years and years and years and years, ever since I started employing these practices, no delivery people came to my house. They just didn't. I didn't have pizza brought to my house. If I wanted to go get a pizza, I'd drive my butt to the pizza place and pick it up. Um, and so I just never gave out my home address. And people would try, but that's why I've always had a separate mailing address that I use for everything. So my home address, I never had anything sent to my home address. I never gave out my home address for anything other than absolutely fundamentally necessary. So, you know, when I first, you know, uh, if I was in a uh, rental situation, which was the last one I came from, then obviously they had, they had my real address. But for every single utility bill, uh, for every single, any kind of bill that I had, that home address was never ever given out. And then to make sure of it, I also had a lock on the mailbox so that nothing could be put in the mailbox. So uh, if any, no one would even be able to put any mail in the mailbox, it would just be a return to sender. So it's very important to understand that just your name alone or just a singular piece of information like your phone number or just an old address or any number of things like that can completely unravel your life if someone's looking for you or if someone means to do you harm or if someone's trying to collect from you or if someone's trying to frivolously sue you as someone appears to be trying to do right now in regards to this last accident. Um, now that hasn't gotten anywhere because they haven't there's a fly in here. They, that hasn't gotten anywhere because they haven't been able to locate me, right? Now, who they have been able to locate is relatives of mine because my relatives are not using those privacy measures. But even when they locate my relatives, they can't serve them. That's not a legal process to serve my relatives who I do not live with. And so when they ask my relatives, well, do you know where Jay is? Then my relatives truthfully answered, no, we don't know where he is. Um, and so that's the reality of having privacy in place. So it gives you a certain level of protection and anonymity. So there's a lot of aspects to privacy and anonymity. And so I'm, I can't go into all of them right now for purposes of brevity. But I did want to cover some of those important points so that you kind of get an understanding of why you should think more about privacy. The problem is, is if you don't do anything about securing your own privacy or anonymity um, before you have a problem, then it's kind of like trying to buy fire insurance while your house is on fire. So if you want to employ privacy, you have to do it before there's a problem. And I speak from personal experience. I had a stalker some years ago uh, with my first ex. Uh, not My first ex was not the stalker, but I was living with my first partner at the time and I had a stalker and it started out innocently enough where it was a business thing I had a business phone number which was linked to my home mistake number one I had a business number which was linked to my home published on the internet well I somehow this person triggered across my my business ad and just decided to make me a target uh, and so this person started blowing up my phone number at all hours of the night, all days, all hours of the day and night, uh, filling up my voicemail. He was using automated equipment to do it. Um, and so filling up my voicemail box and just basically completely invalidating the phone line and making it useless. Now, the first thing you might say is, well, why don't you involve the police? Why don't you involve the phone company? Look, we did all those things. The police were involved and they're like, well, if he's not specifically threatening you, we can't do anything, right? Um, this guy had a, a pattern of behavior. He had already been in prison, and so he kind of knew where the line was. He knew exactly where the legal line was, and he was dancing right up to the line, right to the point that he knew the police couldn't do anything because he wasn't technically threatening me, but he was coming right up to the line for it. And so the police came out and took a report, and they're like, yeah, well, we can't really do anything other than go talk to him and say, hey, don't do that. So that was fruitless. Uh, we got the we got the phone company involved on my side uh, the phone company on my side said well we can try you know blocking and doing this and that well this guy was technologically smart and he had uh, advanced business telephone equipment he knew how to get around their blocks then 
his phone company, his telephone provider started calling me saying, uh, we realize he's harassing you. We can see all this traffic, this phone traffic coming to your number. Can we do anything to help? Because we, we, uh, we see something's going on here. And I'm like, well, yeah, obviously I'd love your help. Well, they weren't able to circumvent it either. So, I mean, I know it sounds like a complete hoax of a story that the police wouldn't do anything or couldn't do anything and that my phone company couldn't stop him and that his own phone company couldn't stop him, but that was the reality. And so I had to employ my own measures to stop this mother And yeah, I just said what I said, but I believed it. So anyway, so I had to employ my own means to deal with this guy because obviously I wasn't getting any help from law enforcement and I wasn't getting any help from the phone companies. Um, so the reason in mentioning this is because then this guy showed up at my house. And this goes back to why you should never be disclosing your real name. You should never be disclosing your real phone number. Uh, I don't disclose my real phone number except to the people that I know that are already in my inner circle. So my close friends and my family are the only people that have my real number. Anyone outside of that that I just meet, like YouTubers that I meet or people that I just meet or business or anything else that I do like that, everybody else gets a Google Voice phone number or some kind of a virtual phone number that is that is not that does not disclose my real phone number because just from your real phone number your entire identity and everything can be just can be uh, unraveled so that was the first lesson I had to learn with this uh, sorry Magnum's moving around getting tangled in my wires here so that was the first thing that I had to learn was that just having my phone number out there completely unraveled my privacy and I mean really unraveled it this guy showed up at my house. He didn't threaten me. He didn't do anything. He just parked on the street outside my house. Um, yeah. Um, until I walked outside with my rifle next to me and my Rottweiler who went and lunged for his car. Then he sped off and I never saw him again at my house. But that's not the point. The point is, is if you don't employ methods of privacy to begin with, then by the time you know you need methods of privacy, it's too late. It's already too late at that point. Um, and so this is, this is a lesson I had to learn the hard way. Um, and I have subsequently seen it happen a couple more times, not where anyone showed up at my house because I was already using methods of privacy, but the point being that it's good to have these things in place first before you need them. And so uh, I have an address that's completely detached from where I used to live in a sticks and bricks. Obviously now it's truly detached because now I'm mobile. But I have had an address for 15 years that's detached from my real address. I've had a Google Voice phone number and I can change those at will. So I mean I've had several different Google Voice or virtual phone numbers that I've used over the years that while they do connect to my telephone, they do not disclose my real phone number, which is helpful. Um, I don't give out my real name to anybody unless they have some legal reason for it, and uh, usually people don't. So if you ever meet me, my name is Jay, and that's as far as it's going to get. Or hey, pick a last name at random, I don't care. Smith, that sounds good. So Jay Smith, there you go. Or Don Johnson, or Mark's whatever, Mark. The point is, you just make something up. So I use a fake name, I've been using that for years, uh, and so again, the only people that know my real identity or know uh, things that are, could be detrimental to my security or my privacy or my anonymity are the people that I've either met and I, and I have developed a relationship with or people that I have known you know, all my life, family and stuff like that. So I could give you numerous examples of how privacy is vitally important to you and that you really need to understand the importance of privacy before it calls on you and knocks on your door and slaps you in the face, which is what could happen. But uh, I know that most people will never pay attention to this. Most people um, kind of go by the luck of the draw that, well, I'm safe in numbers, you know, I'm safe in the crowd. Um, well, yeah, you could be, you might be, you might be safe in the crowd all of your life and never have anything happen. But what if something does happen? So again, I'm going to uh, mention that this privacy author's book is uh, right here below, and his name is JJ Luna, and I'll put it up on the screen here too. And I do think he is the authority on privacy uh, at this point in time, and I think he's been the authority on privacy for a number of years. And so he talks about the different levels of privacy, level zero, level one, level two, level three. 
uh, where you know the top level is equivalent to what we understand or what people in the public understand as witness protection. So that would kind of be the top level, and then there's various levels of privacy down from there that you can employ. So in the event that the author were to see this video, because you know this this video might bring more traffic to his book sales. So in the event he were to see this video, I already kind of know what he'd probably say, which is, well, one of the first things you should do if you want to have privacy is you don't put your face out there either. So you're right. I get it. <laughs> I am violating that rule of privacy because here is my face. But, uh, but aside from that, I take privacy very seriously, and um, it even ends up being points of humor sometimes for people that are around me, uh, such as Deborah Joy, who you guys, I think, all know from the, the solar install videos, and, and of course, we became friends through this uh, whole YouTube RVing community thing, and so she's had uh, a lot of jokes at my expense about, you know, Mr. Smith and uh, making fun of it all. But yeah, that's fine. I can take it. I can take the I can take the jabs because uh, I sleep well at night. You know, I sleep well at night knowing that uh, I don't have to worry about a frivolous lawsuit being uh, dropped on my doorstep. Uh, I don't have to worry about someone just randomly showing up uh, because they have some sort of a perceived grudge with me, or I don't have to worry about you know any number of situations that are specifically tied to privacy. Um, so I hope you guys. Uh, I don't know if this is enough information to have whetted your appetite to look into this more, but I would hope that if it is, you'll check out the book. Um, and I think you can, yeah, you can get a you can get an electronic version of it, like a Kindle version of it or an ebook version of it. So you don't even have to buy the hardcover. I actually bought the hardcover book of J.J. Luna's. Well, I've bought most of his books, but I remember buying the hardcover of his uh, his primary is How to Stay Invisible. I, I bought the hardcover of that book when I first heard about him, which is a whole other funny story how I, how, how I came across him, or how I came across his book. And so I bought the hardcover, and then I subsequently loaned it to a friend, and uh, I never got it back from her. So <laughs> I don't even have a hard copy, hard copy of this book anymore. Now I just have like an ebook version of it. But anyway, it's a great read. Uh, he has updated his book a few times to stay current with changing trends in privacy and information sharing and all the various things that are kind of like a moving target in our society today where these things can change every five, ten, or even less years. And so he's updated his book. So just make sure, or, I mean, if you're buying it from an official link like on Amazon or something, you're obviously going to get his most recent version of his book. Uh, if you're going somewhere else to get his book, like a used bookstore, or you're downloading it or from some other source or something like that, then you might get an outdated version of this book. Because um, I think he's on version... Well, I'd have to go look. I think it's. I think he's had three editions of this book, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But if you're buying it, for instance, on Amazon, then you're obviously going to get the most current edition of the book. So just make sure you're getting the most current edition uh, through official sources, otherwise you might be reading some outdated information on privacy. But he covers all kinds of things in there. He covers vehicle registrations. He covers um, ghost home addresses, which is basically just having a, an address that you put out there for public consumption that does not disclose your real home address. Uh, he covers um, alternate names. He covers um, stalkers. He covers asset protection. Um, he covers a lot of stuff. And then if he gets into areas that he doesn't specifically know the answers to, because uh, he doesn't claim to be an expert on everything, then he will always come right out and say, "All right, this is a topic I don't know as much about, but I can point you to some guy over, you know, point you to another person that is an expert on this topic or that topic." Uh, so he doesn't claim to be an expert on everything that's privacy related, but on the big picture stuff, the big picture stuff that anyone should be concerned with and can do without breaking the bank, um, I'd say he's the expert. He's the he's the go-to guy. Um, and there are, you know, as you go through different levels of privacy that you may or may not want to employ, um, that does, in, that does uh, inject certain different costs if you're, as you get more and more into levels of privacy, because then you have to pay for, you know, different things. Not with him, but I mean, you have to pay, you know, maybe you have to pay to set up an LLC to do this or that, or to have a registered agent in another state. Anyway, the point being, you can kind of customize it to what you are able to do based on your own individual situation. So, um, 
for instance, vehicle registrations. So to protect vehicle registration information so that people cannot uh, get your identity and try to track you down or find you or figure out who you are or whatever else, you can put vehicle registrations into a, a particular kind of New Mexico LLC. So I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but the point being that there are a lot of options out there that are, that are pretty bulletproof. Um, and uh, he's, he's had those methods of privacy tested in real life because um, he's had people that have, you know, for whatever reason, tried to come knock on his door, try to come find him, and they run up against the brick wall and, and they can't figure out who he is or they can't find him because they, they can't even run his plates and figure out who he is. So, uh, and these are legal methods. We're not talking about anything illegal here, nothing that will get anyone in trouble. Uh, talking about employing legal methods for protecting, for instance, license plate registrations so that people uh, cannot get that information. And you might say, well, license plate registrations are very secure pieces of information and every state has laws about DMV records being protected from public use or public uh, viewing. Uh, yes, that is true. There are laws in every state protecting against that as far as I know every state but the problem is it's all it takes is one crack in the armor and all that one crack in the armor has to be is someone that knows a person in law enforcement that is a little bit unscrupulous or know one person in law enforcement that might have their own grudge or just you know someone that knows someone in law enforcement that doesn't think anything about giving that information to someone that you know they're married to or someone that they know don't think for a moment that stuff doesn't happen. That stuff happens, and that's why even protecting something that you might think is already pretty well protected, like license plate registration, is important. So some of those things come at a higher cost to set those things up so that you have privacy at those levels, uh, but it can be done. And so I only mention it because it, you know, applying uh, techniques of privacy for yourself uh, is kind of a uh, a, uh, a buffet process in the sense that you can pick and choose what you want to do or you can pick and choose based on what you can afford to employ certain methods of privacy and I don't have all of the methods of privacy employed myself even though I would like to but I don't um, for the same reason because some of them are costly but some of them are kind of like low-hanging fruit in that some of them are very easy to do and very affordable to do and it's just simply a matter of taking the extra step to do them and taking the effort to do them so that they're there to protect you in the event that you get someone trying to show up on your door or try to get someone that is trying to frivolously sue you or any other number of uh, potential um, things that can happen. And JJ Luna goes through a lot of those examples, sorry, uh, JJ Luna goes through a lot of those examples in his book, um, Real Life Examples. And so it paints the picture very very well and I'll just give you one and then I'm gonna wrap this video up and that'll be the end of it from my end because I can, I'm not gonna sit here and try to give all the information that's available on this topic but one example that is real to life that can really happen to people and they don't think about it is someone that is unstable or they have a grudge or they're stalking someone uh, at their workplace and so that can quickly spill over into you know someone then looking for someone else at their workplace or trying to find the person at their workplace or where they live or whatever the case may be and so there's been there's a great example of that in JJ Luna's book where he talks specifically about how someone trying to it was like a a romance in the workplace kind of thing that went wrong and so then that person trying to go and find their boss's house and luckily their boss had employed certain methods to obscure their home address and so this crazy person ended up getting caught before they could find where their boss lived or where their this employer lived that they were that they were looking for that they were on the hunt for um, so these are kind of you know the broad strokes of why privacy should be important to everybody but the point is is you don't know you don't know where danger is always going to come from. And that doesn't mean that I walk around in my life being constantly worried or constantly afraid, because I'm not. But it just means you should be aware. 
and it kind of goes back to something else I mentioned in another video where someone commented oh you always seem to be looking around yes you should always be looking around in your life you should always be aware of what's going on around you who's around you who's approaching you what the situations are that are going on outside your door you should always be aware that doesn't mean you're scared it doesn't mean you're you're uh, you know operating in a uh, a state of constantly being on edge it just means it's healthy to be aware of what's going on around you it's much better than having your head in the sand so i i have uh meandered enough on this topic i think for today so i'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up but again if you're interested in this topic of privacy anonymity and protecting yourself protecting your assets protecting your identity protecting your whereabouts so that you don't have those surprises as i've already had in my life i've already had it happen and like I said, my most recent example is this father of this girl that struck me who was not there and was not a witness trying to frivolously sue me. And so my privacy is working because since he hasn't been able to locate me, he hasn't been able to serve me or have his process server serve me. So I mean, these are real life examples. These are the real deal. These are the things that can happen to you and you're not going to know it until it is on your doorstep. So consider looking at techniques of privacy for yourself and how it could help you and how it could protect you financially personally in your own you know your own physical space consider it that's all i'm saying so if you're interested the book is linked below and until the next video guys i want to need to show the animals because i know i'm going to get in trouble otherwise so we're getting ready to go to the park hey buddy are you ready to go to the dog park yeah i bet you are and then, of course, he's like, don't bother me. Don't bother me. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. Um, wow, you guys are really seeing behind the scenes today <laughs> with my lighting and everything else. So uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Uh, I think I've talked enough, so I'll see you guys in the next video, and if you have any questions or any comments on this topic of privacy and, privacy and anonymity, and you want to leave them in the comments below, feel free to do so. Uh, I will try to answer them as best I can based upon my own personal experience and the things that I've already done uh, to employ privacy, but if you have any questions or comments about this topic, uh, feel free to ask them, and if I can answer them, I will, and if I can't, well, then I'll hopefully direct you to someone or somewhere that you can uh, maybe get those questions answered. All right, guys, uh, it's uh, great to make another video. I just kind of had the urge today to make another video. I don't know why that is, but every two or three days, I'm just like, okay, I want to make a video. Yeah, I, I just feel like I, like I got to get a video made. I want, I want to make a video, and um, this issue of privacy has been circulating in my head um, for weeks now, uh, as far back as the Quinault meetup, actually before the Qual uh, before the Quinault meetup, I was already thinking about this video, uh, and so I just haven't done it yet, and so I, I wanted to get it done. This is one of those uh, topics that's kind of just been burning in the back of my head, like I need to make a video on this. Um, and then the last tie-in I'll make before I go, the very last tie-in is that J.J. Luna, the author of that book, actually talks about, he has a whole nother book that's still privacy oriented, but it's specifically about living off grid like this. So he has a um, another book, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, so I'll link it below um, because I'm gonna look it up after I get done with this video. I'm gonna look it up and I'll put it in the, um, in the description below here. But uh, he has, the tie-in is that he's done a book specifically about living off grid in an RV or cargo trailer or some type of some type of a converted type of RV like this uh, as a means of employing privacy for yourself um, in ways that you might not be able to as easily do in a sticks and bricks home or house or an apartment. Uh, but that's not why I got into this life. Uh, I've been wanting to get into this type of living for many, many years, um, but the privacy aspect is just one more delicious piece of like frosting on top of the cake of why I'm doing it but the privacy alone was not the reason I did it but it just turns out that it was a nice compliment to living this way is that you get more privacy this way um, because you certainly are able to protect your whereabouts when you're mobile uh, unless you're just being silly you, 
you should be able to protect your privacy a lot more effectively this way than in a sticks and bricks where you're publishing your address for all, all, all sorts of information gathering uh, businesses. So, all right, that's it, guys. I'll see you on the next video, and I hope you have a good one. All right, bye.